Heavy metal my rock. Global mind. And today on My Global Minds, we are talking with Josh Todd of Buck Cherry to talk about their new album, Volume 10, that's coming out on June 2nd. Welcome. Always oh, a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm very excited. You know, the, the 10th record, uh, we've been sitting on it since October last year, so it's great that it's going to finally hit the streets. Wow. I have to say, I think I like it more than Hellbound, and I liked Hellbound a lot. Uh, wow, that's cool. I mean, I thought Hellbound is like up to that point was our best record, you know, so that that may that means a lot. I think it's got like a it's very up tempo. It's very um, got a party vibe to it. And it, it's it's very positive. A lot of the stuff I think is like just rock and roll positive stuff. And I really like. Yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, it, it, times have changed since Hellbound, you know, I mean, we were in a real uh, rut, uh, you know, the world was not not Buck Cherry, but uh, it was it was a lot of you know, kind of, uh, negativity going on. And so, um, you know, that's what came out and, you know, still love that, that uh, period. And I love that record, you know, and, yeah. and now it's just, uh, it's just a different time, you know, and it's time to have a good time. It's time to, to raise hell and have fun. And, you know, um, nobody does it like Buck Sherry for sure. Yeah. You guys are definitely carrying the torch for rock and roll. It's really, this one's a real mm -hmm. rock and roll party album. And that's what I liked about it. Thank you. Yeah. Tell me about the importance of releasing new music and albums every few years. I mean, you guys are one of yeah. the few bands that consistently do that. Um, the fans appreciate it. Tell me the importance to you guys. Yeah, I think it's important because, uh, you know, that's that's what we do. We're, we're musicians. We do it for a living. And I couldn't imagine not not making records, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what happens with some bands. You know, I can only imagine because it's very hard as you know, to keep uh, a lineup together and to keep people getting along with each other. And I think that's what lends to, you know, bands not making records for years and years and years. But uh, uh, I want to continue to grow as a singer and a songwriter. And I feel like the only way to do that is to consistently make records and challenge yourself and try to, you know, make something better than the last time and all that stuff. Right. I agree. Um, do you think also it has to do making music has to do with your record contract also. Like, I don't, I don't know anything about record contracts, but back in the day when we were kids in the seventies, you know, Kiss and Van Halen would release an album like clockwork every year, every six months. Is right. the record contract stating now that you have to release an album every certain period of time, or do you have that liberty to, to release it when you want, when it's ready? No, our, our record label knows that we're going to, uh, we're going to deliver a record and that, you know, that, that's a wonderful thing. We have a great relationship, a great reputation as well, you know, so when people do invest in us, you know, like record labels, um, they know that we're going to uh, work hard and deliver something. And we're, we're always the ones that are going, Hey, we, we're ready to do another record. Let's, let's get this together. And, you know, um, I think they all appreciate that. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know what what the relationships are like with the, the other bands on the label, but I mean, that's just the way we uh, operate. Well, that's cool. Um, are you always inspired to create music? You talked a little bit about earlier, keeping the band together and keeping the band going and moving forward. But are you always inspired to write? Is that something that's a no brainer for you? Yeah, uh, it's always, you know, um, but, you know, actually, the writing and songwriting and putting pen to paper or, you know, typing on my, uh, my, uh, iPad. It's, uh, it's something that I can definitely do in moderation as well. You know, like it's like a faucet for me when I know it's time to make a record, I turn it on and then I don't want to stop until it's over. So, um, you know, that's, that's the good and the bad about it. You know, like once I turn it on, you know, all hands on deck. We gotta, we gotta write and write and write and write until uh, we get to the finish line. You know, and sometimes that becomes uh, super intense, intense for some people. You know, 
but uh, that's the only way I know how to do it. Um, I don't like to leave stuff unfinished. I don't like to leave stuff undone. I don't like to start some, something and not finish it. So um, that being said, you know, once we decide, okay, let's start making a record, then it's on. You know, your, your, your vocals and your lyrics are very emotional. They're very impactful. They're very vibrant. Um, and I don't always analyze them so much. I'm more of the guitar guy and the melody guy. But when you're putting together lyrics, uh, are you sometimes um, looking for stories? Are you looking for insights? Are you looking for things going on in your life to write about? It, it happens all different kinds of ways. Sometimes, um, sometimes I'll come up with a melody in, a in the shower, right? And I'll just, I'll just start scatting some, something and I'm like, oh, I'm hitting on something here. I like it. And then I'll just record it on my iPhone after and then I'll and I'll it'll spark some kind of emotion in me on what I want to write about and then I just start writing and I've just always had a knack for that um sometimes I get a composition and it's just a musical composition and I'll listen to it for a second and I'll try to I always ask myself what is this what is, what kind of mood is this bringing out in me you mm -hmm. know and if it's like a song like keep on fighting like it's an aggressive song so I want to write lyrics like, you know, you want more, you want more, I give you more, keep on fight, you know, like is, that comes to me, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I just, I start scat scatting it out and writing. I just start beating into shape that, that way. Or, um, you know, sometimes Marty will sing a melody over a song, like feels like love. And I've already written a melody and written words. And then he comes in with some alternative melody and because, I have written a lot of songs with him and I respect him. I listen to it and I, and I go, which one is better? And you know what, on that particular song, his was better. So I just wrote words over his melody, you know, and then we would tweak little parts and stuff like that. And that would happen that way. You know, it just, it happens all different kinds of ways. Have you been in a situation where you wrote something and people are debating the importance of it and the history of it and the, the thought process behind it in the back of your mind, you're going, I was just rhyming words. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. That, hap that happened with our first uh, hit single lit up because it was about cocaine and I was sober when I wrote it. And it's like, uh, who gives a shit? Like I, it's my experience. Yeah. I used to do, I used to do a lot of it and I'm going to write about my fucking life. And if you don't like it, I don't, you know, it's so funny. It's, it's because I was thinking about this. If I had dated a girl named Sharona in high school and she was the love of my life and then we broke up and then years later, I wrote a song about Sharona. No one would give a shit, you know, <laughs> but because I had a relationship with cocaine for a little while in my life and then I became sober and then I wrote about those times, all of a sudden I'm not living the life, man, or whatever, whatever you want to put on it, man. So, you know, that that happened to us early on, but it, it didn't affect us in any way. Yeah, I was thinking of that question. I was watching a David Bowie special last night on cable and, you know, they were analyzing and they were so debating his lyrics and what he was saying. And I was like, I'm not a big Bowie fan, but I, I do appreciate him. And I was like, I wonder if this guy was just rhyming words, you know, <laughs> and people that, that's how that's how it is. That's how simple it is. I wrote lit up in 15 minutes. Honestly, I walked in the studio. They were playing the, the music. I was like, this is a party song, man. I grabbed the mic. I just started riffing out some scats and I recorded the scats and I wrote the words like that. That was it. No, no, you know, I didn't, you didn't think about it that much, you know, and those are sometimes how hit songs come together. Same thing with crazy bitch, you know? Yes. Yeah. Two of my favorite songs that you guys have ever did. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was, you know, you, you guys are always touring. You guys are relentless tourers. When did you find time to write and record this album? We, uh, like I said, we we kind of got a plan together and said, let's start accumulating songs for this rec new record. So then every time we had a break, because I don't like to record while I'm doing shows, it's just too much of a load right. on me. So like we'll start accumulating a little some ideas here and there while we're doing shows. And then we get home and we have like two weeks off. And Stevie and I would record like maybe two songs, put them away and then so on and so forth. We go out for six weeks, come home for two weeks. And then before you know it, we got like 12 or 15 songs. Then we fly to Nashville and we do nine days of guerrilla songwriting with Marty Fredrickson. Yeah. And in those nine days, we wrote almost a whole record, nine songs. And, um, you know, we just have this 
this uh, work ethic and this chemistry when we do those songwriting sessions it happened with hellbound it happened with volume 10 and it's really special and you know and then that's how it came about and then we also had some spillover from hellbound you know so two of those songs made it on the record this or that and turn it on and and so um you know that's how it goes are you writing in backstage or are you doing it at soundcheck coming up with these ideas no i I like to be by myself, you know, okay. that's when I come up with, you know, and um, so if I got like, like maybe Stevie gives me two parts, <clears throat> give me two parts on a guitar. Oh, that's hooky. I like that. So, and then I just record it on a voice note. I listen to it. I simmer on it a little bit. And then all of a sudden, you know, it. sometimes when you listen to it and you, and you, and you consciously say, I'm going to write for the, on this composition you know this guitar part and then you just kind of set it aside that's already cooking it's cooking in the brain you know so then when you have a little bit of quiet time that's when melodies just come to me and then i'll be like oh that sounds good and i'll scat it maybe at a low octave into my phone sometimes i've woken up from a sleep and i just <laughs> you know i'm it's like three in the morning and i'm like oh that's so good but i don't want to use my voice because that's i'm tired and groggy i don't want to like try to sing at that point but i don't want to forget the melody so i'll almost talk it into my phone you know yeah you know what i thought was really cool this um this album has some very familiar and unfamiliar elements of buck cherry um you know it has that feel good feel to it. it's very comfortable to listen to and it's very familiar to listen to this and that has an aerosmith vibe there's other songs that have like a big queen guitarist vibe to it talk about the ins the consistency that Buck Cherry goes through to make sure that these songs sound consistently like Buck Cherry, regardless of the flavor behind them. Yeah, I mean, what you hear is the finished product, but it takes a lot of hard work to get to that that point where you get this group of songs that are, you know, really jiving and it feels like a body of work, you know. And so we had to write again like twenty five songs wow. uh, to get to get to that point, you know. So that's how you do it, you know. You can kind of start feeling how the record's coming about once you get pretty deep in a songwriting uh, uh, cycle. So um, that's what we did. We just kind of, you know, and then once we started writing with Marty, we just, you know, what we did is we met with Marty in, in uh, Nashville at the beginning of the nine day run that we were going to write together. Yeah. And we listened to all the demos prior to that. So we kind of talked it out, you know, got a feeling, Oh, this is cool. This is not cool. Let's go in this direction. You know, we just start kind of talking about it and then the floodgates open. We know it's it's time and we go in and we start writing and um, we're all uh, bringing our A game because we know we're with Marty and Marty's Marty's like uh, he's, he's a really talented guy. He is writing songs, you know, around the clock. And, you know, so when we get in there with him, it's like super exciting for us, you know, because we learn so much. Um, he also really uh, understands what's special about Buck Sherry and brings that out in us. He's really good at that. And so it's just so much, uh, it's fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's what records should be about. That is, that's true. You know, do you have the opportunity to experiment, maybe think out of the Buck Cherry box a little bit on some songs? Is that something, or do you always try? Always. To you really? Always. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking out of the Buck Cherry box like all the time. Are you really? Uh, yeah, you know, I listen to mostly uh, pop music because it's it's driven by really amazing singers and songwriters, you know. So yeah. um, I feel like if I'm always listening to hit songs, then I'm going to be closer to writing a hit song. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's the way I look at it. And I like to apply that to rock music because I think it makes it a lot more interesting. And, you know, sometimes we'll refer to a song you know, that has been written before. And we'll say, you know, like, for instance, I said to Marty, I am obsessed with hysteria. I love this song by Def Leppard. <laughs> I want, I want Buck Cherry's version of hysteria. And he's like, cool. And we're all like, cool. And then the next day I come in and I hear the music for, uh, feels like love. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Right. And then <laughs> all of a sudden, Marty's like, yeah, I got this melody. And he, he like sings this melody over it. I'm like, that's fucking amazing. And I go, I go back to the hotel room and I just write all the words in two hours and that's it. And, and, and feels like, feels like love is born. And then, 
you know, it goes on and on. Sometimes, uh, you know, I'll just say, hey, where's my fucking ACDC song? You know, like on the Hellbound sessions, uh, they they kept giving me all these songs and I kept saying, I want a four on the floor ACDC song. And finally, they gave me the music to Hellbound the song, you know, so stuff like that happens, you know, if that answers your question. Yeah. Gun was my favorite song off of that album. Oh, Gun? Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a, a it's, song. It's a great song. It's about Bonnie and Clyde. Yes. Yes. When, we, yeah. when I interviewed you, you told me that. Um, have you ever strayed too far on a song? And if so, which Buck Cherry song do you think you strayed too far on? Maybe on the experimental phase. <laughs> strayed too far. Oh, fuck. I'm, I'm, of course I have, you know. I yeah. think, you know, if we go back to uh, Confessions, that record, it was kind of a concept record. And mm-hmm. so... Uh, we had to cover the seven sins. That's that. That's what we put on ourselves, you know. And yeah. and it was really cool for me um, because I had to really write and rewrite. I wasn't used to that, you know. If if I write a song and it's not popping, I just move on and I write another song, you know. But that was like, nope, got to write a song for pride. Pride has got to be the title. Pride is the song, you know, or whatever. And I think pride is the song that I'm talking about. I I wanted to make it kind of um, almost like a spoken word type doorsy types uh song and i felt and and now when i look back i love the verses the verses are so amazing but i don't know if i delivered quite so well on the chorus like i wanted to but it's i still like it it's just yeah. you know could have done better but you know i'm a different person now than i was then and so it is what it is there is a charm to it but you know i guess if i had a song that would probably be it you know this and that you talked about um Def Leppard and Hysteria inspiring you for the other song. This and that really has like a late 80s Aerosmith vibe to it, I think. Particularly it does. part of the background. Were you channeling them for that one? Like Ragdoll. Part of it. Part, part of it. Oh, yeah. I'm on, you know, I love Aerosmith and I love I love the way he chops up his stuff. And I, I already do that with a lot of my stuff. So it jives that way. It has that grease. I know that what you're talking about. Yeah. It definitely has that grease. But this or that kind of, I just... I heard an interview with uh, with um, Paul McCartney, you know, and he was talking about songwriting and, you know, he's just so interesting to me because uh, he'll just take a simple phrase and make such an incredible song out of it, you know, and I started thinking about simple phrases and this or that and just like kind of just scatting some like simplicity and this or that came out. And I'm like, ooh, that's a good title, this or that. And then I just started kind of working off that title and with with Paul McCartney in mind and Jive and like, you know, Tyler and and that's what came out. That's a great song. I love it. Um, Brian, you did a Brian Adams cover song, Summer of 69. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. ultimate love song. It's the ultimate first love, first sex, being in a band and mixing it all together. Um, how did that relate to Bucks Cherry's history and your history? Yeah, that's a song we just pull out from time to time live. Uh usually when we were just like really tired and we really wanted just to throw out a cover song because we don't do a lot of them and um and our manager caught it one day and he's like wow you guys do this so good we got to record this song this is so cool and you know we're huge fans of brian adams and i think i think every band and when you're when you're in the when you're in the game of songwriting you'll have those songs that you just wish you wrote yourself that aren't your songs and that's one of those songs you know I have loved that song for, you know, the eight, since the eighties. And I like, it's just one of those songs. I'm like, fuck, every time I hear it, I'm like, I wish I would have written a song. The song is perfect. Perfect. You know? So that's why we recorded it. And, you know, we speak, we sped it up a little bit and, you know, you put my voice on it and all of a sudden it sounds like a really good Buck Cherry song, you know? So I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And, it just kind of jumped off and everybody loved it, our label and our team. And so we put it on at the end. It was going to be just uh, a bonus track, but there, there's no such thing as bonus tracks anymore. So, yeah. yeah you did a very edgier version. I liked it. It was more rock and yeah. roll. It was a little bit Thank more. you. You know, and it's, it's the perfect song for people our age growing up, trying to start the band and, and, and then living the dream and having the girlfriend and the seriousness of all. It was just, it's the perfect song for youth, I thought. You know, and I was like, wow, it must have related to you really well. I think if a song could capture summer from the summer from the beginning to the end, 
you yes. know, and everything you feel in summer. And that's the song that that is the song that describes summer and youth and love and, you know, uh, inspiration and, you know, just, you know, being in a band and all those things. I mean, it's just such a cool song, you know, in that regard. And because it's so well written, you can slow it down and it's still great. You can speed it up and it's still great. You know, you can leave it where it's at and it's, and it's great. It's just, uh, it's just one of those songs. That song instantly takes me back. Even your version took me back to when I was a kid. And yeah, so, you know, it just, it's like a time machine. You hop in and you're like, Whoa, boom. Uh, yep. To you. you know, the band seems very, has a very stable lineup now. Um, are you more critical who you pick in the band and who you have joined the band maybe than you were in the past? Oh man, I've learned so much, you know, uh, with that and how to pick the right people. And, and you are right. This is very, uh, stable, amazing lineup. We are still getting along. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, you know, you just can't help uh, dealing with people who get into a situation for the right reasons and then they uh, fall out of it. They don't they don't, you know, have a passion for it anymore. And there's nothing you can do about that. And that's happened a few times in this band. And, you know, we just have to move on and we always get better. You know, I mean, I, I would tell anybody who's in a situation where you have maybe a bad apple in the band you better deal with it because it will it will make the whole thing rotten you know you gotta you gotta you gotta deal with those things because if you want to have longevity you know it's important and um you know uh, I'm, I'm glad that we we work through all that no that's great yeah being in a band is a, a tough gig being away from home having families missing shit absolutely away it's like it's it, it's not an easy lifestyle it's and glamorous, I think, as people think, I think on the underside of it is, you know, more challenges on a personal level. Absolutely. And, you know, what people don't know is that, you know, when you're in a band, you you have to spend so much time together where like most people, when they go, when they, when they have a career, they go to work, they deal with the work personalities and they leave it and they go home and they have their home life, you know, and that's not the way it is in uh, music. So because of that a lot of stuff comes up you know and a lot of a lot of things to deal with you know so that being said communication is key and especially at this point in our lives you know we wanted to get guys in the band that um were were um people who are in it to win it and they're very grateful for to be able to do it and and they love it and all those things got to be going on because eventually you're going to have to spend a lot of time together. Sure. Like-minded people. It makes sense to me. Yes. And uh, I've seen you countless times, such a high energy show. Um, do you feel it the next day? Voice wise, physical wise? No, because uh, I warm my voice up properly and I warm down after shows. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I wish I could tell you that I did, but I, you know, I don't because I, I really, I really take care of myself, you know, so I yeah. don't feel that way because I, I've done it all wrong to, to get to this place in my life to where, um, I have a really good, uh, really good practices now, you know, like you got to sleep real good as a singer. You know, I, I only drink water out on the road, uh, you know, room temperature water and, my diet's really good. I, and I don't eat for hours before I go to bed and all this kind of stuff makes it, uh, you know, very manageable. Sounds like almost like you're training for a marathon. The one show, every show is a, a new marathon that you have to run. Well, you know, as a singer, you can't just go buy some new guitar strings and, you know, when the, when the old ones are worn out, you know, like <laughs> you are, your body is your instrument. So yeah. you better prepare yourself to, to be an instrument, you know? And so when I go on the road, I click into that mode where, okay, I am now uh, a vessel, you know, to be this, this guy on stage and, and to perform. And it's very important for me because I know uh, that people are, you know, they're spending their money, they're planning their, their month around going to the show and all the stuff that goes on, you know, when I speak to people that come to Buckcherry shows. So it's, it's really important to me. That's very true. You know, so many musicians are involved in many project bands, um, side bands, super groups. I don't recall you ever really doing anything like that before, except for the <laughs> one solo album. Have you, do you get offers to do that? And 
join other bands and help collaborate with other artists and put together. And I always wondered about uh, that. You know, I did in the past and I've done those things where you show up and do a song with a super group. And um, my experience, I'm very particular on on what I want to hear when I step on stage so that I can be effective, you know, and, um, you know, walking the situations, I feel like um, they're kind of thrown together. They're unrehearsed, uh, you know, as far as like, I got, I got to know what's going on because I don't want to get up there and not have what I need, you know? And so yeah. um, after going through that a few times, I just don't enjoy it, you know? Um, and I did do a, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a super group, but uh, I was with, you know, Keith and I, uh we're with matt duff and slash for a second we we yeah. tried to put a make a group and it just didn't work out it fell apart for whatever reasons but i mean honestly to answer your question i'm just too busy i'm really busy yeah, yeah. so when i'm not uh singing or touring or writing songs i just want to be with my family no, i get it i get it well listen i want to thank you so much for your time it's always so insightful to speak with you and i really appreciate it i love the new cd great vibe I can't thank you so much on the beach with a couple of beers, just chilling out, having a good time. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's a good visual. So thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much. Have a great Bye day. Bye, buddy. Be good. Heavy metal rock. Oh, oh, my.